Welcome back to Elden Ring. In this video, we are taking a look at how to make your rune farms faster. And I mean, this makes the farms really, really fast. So starting off a Stormhill Shack, which is from the first step, you come up to gate front, you do a left and through the massive gate that's there up the hill, you make your way to Stormhill Shack. From there, we are going to head north and just go up this path over here keep following it north and then just come off the path to the right hand side onto this dirt path and then follow it all the way to the end of the bridge and just quickly before we get any further into the video if you're not currently subbed to the channel make sure you do sub turn notifications on if you enjoy the video don't forget to leave a like all support is greatly appreciated and if you want to support me further as a creator then check out the links in the description and let's get back to it when you get to the end of the bridge if you go down here to your left Follow the grass all the way to the left up into that rock formation. Follow that passage round to the right and eventually you will get to Lake Facing Cliffs. From Lake Facing Cliffs what you want to do is follow the path all the way round and come down to here at the beginning of the lake. When you arrive at this site of grace, so this is Leonia Lake Shore, what you're going to do is come and talk to this vendor over here you're going to need to buy a lantern. The lantern is going to cost you 1800 runes and I would say it's pretty much going to be required to do what we are about to do. The only reason I say that is because where we are going is incredibly dark. So the next step is to make your way into Kaelid. From Stormhill Shack, if you head northeast all the way along this path, follow it across the bridge, down past the Summon Water Village, just keep going all the way round until you get to Smouldering Wall. What we need to do from Smouldering Wall is head east and follow this fiery wall all the way along. And I would make sure that you don't have too many runes on you at this point, because you might die a couple of times. But when we get over here, if we drop down in this direction, so towards like the edge of the cliff, what we are going to do is I'm going to jump back on my... Actually, no, I'll run around. I was going to jump back on my mount to get the double jump. Just be careful of the enemies. You should be all right. But when you get to this tree here... I, I've aggroed something. If you stand on it and run all the way along... You're going to follow this route and get to this little bit here. Now this is exactly why we need the lantern. So what I'm going to do is inventory, you can put it onto like your hotbar essentially. But if I use it, when we come down here, there is going to be a site of grace. This is the abandoned cave. So from the smouldering wall, go all the way along, go on the massive tree and come into the abandoned cave. Then what we're going to do is this part is really, really tricky, but you've got to jump down to the left-hand side. So if we sprint, jump, and then just keep rolling, or try and roll, be careful of them explosions. I've got Scarlet Rot, so I'm probably now going to die. I am going to die. Look at how fast it eats you. So what I've done is fast-traveled away from there for the time being. The abandoned cave is over there. I've come back to Rotview Balcony, which is just past Summon Water Village. Because what we need to do, Scarlet Rot builds up no matter whether you're in it or not. Let me just quickly... What you're going to want to do is pop into that shack. So where is the Site of Grace? Over here. If we rest, get rid of all the aggro. As you stand up from the Site of Grace at Rotview Balcony... On your southwest, in that shack there, you get five preserving boluses. It alleviates the scarlet rot buildup and cures the rot itself. I would strongly recommend taking these. You can craft them if you can get the Armorer's Cookbook level 6. You will then need a sacramental bud, a crystal cave moss, and two dew-kissed herba. So I'd recommend just coming here grabbing them five. So now back to the cave we go. You can also get an incantation if you want to called Flame Cleanse Me. However, these do not reduce the rate of accumulation. So it's not going to go up any slower. So you still need to be quick. So inventory. 
if we use one of these preserving boluses. So I'm going to munch one of them, wait for the explosion, and go. It's still fighting, still fighting. Maybe you don't use it beforehand. I'm actually so glad I get to test this for everyone. <laughs> Sometimes it can be an absolute pain in the arse. And as soon as it goes off, jump. Go, 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 go. Keep rolling. Roll, roll, roll. As soon as I make it on here, inventory. Eat one of these. Oh my god. It worked. We got rid of it. I only lost a little bit of my health. So then, what you want to do from this section is jump on this wall. Try and not touching the red stuff. I'm going to have to equip my lantern again as well. So follow this round. You are going to have a summoning pool here. Or a martyr effigy, whatever you want to call them. So now, we're going to have to start running through. If we jump down here, round to the right, ignore all the enemies. Keep following this all the way straight through. I'd recommend having an aggro-based spirit with you. So something like Lone Wolf, the uh, Skeleton Dudes. Keep following this all the way round. And then jump over that. For some reason, this one doesn't build up. Then come round to the right. Keep going up. Try and get away from that. There we go. And then here, right here, we have ourselves a boss. Fingers crossed I don't die to this, because if you die to it, you got to start all over again. So I've popped my bubble bubble. And these two, I'm going to... I, I should have done this so much sooner. For some reason, I have one... Oh, no, there we go. The second boss is waking up. First boss dead. I'm telling you, if you haven't got this weapon, go and follow my guide for it. Look at the boss. 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 There's nothing to look at. He's fucking dead. This weapon, honestly. The video's titled Elden Ring Weapon that is the absolute best. I am going to... Uh, I'll chuck it in the pinned comment. Go watch it. Get yourself the weapon. I'm running an astrologer. And yeah, I just, I, I laser beam bosses. I absolutely love it. And it's always nice to have a spirit to take some of the aggro off. But anyway, we are going to get our hands on the gold scarab. With my astrologer, I only have one talisman slot. So what you want to do to get another talisman slot is take down either Margit the Fell Omen, Renala, Queen of the Full Moon, or Godfrey, First Elden Lord. Some of the bosses in the game. So that will mean you can then run four talismans. But if I take off Radagon's Saw Seal for the time being and I put on the Gold Scarab, it increases the runes obtained from defeated enemies. So let me try this. What I've done is I've kept on Radagon's Saw Seal, so this is no bonus runes. Let me see if my fire... It does, it does 1200, but the range, I've managed to hit them both. It is 1,000 runes. So if I get myself out of combat, fast travel, then come back, we shall see the difference. I've just equipped the Golden Scarab. So now, if we come back out of here to the big dudes again, use another one. So I got 1,200 runes. Then what I'm going to do is finish this guy off. Don't stand in the way, you fucking idiot. <laughs> you deserve that. Oh, wait, he's still alive. No, 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 and I don't like heavy load. No, I need mana, I need mana, I need mana. I don't know why I call it mana, it's focus points or FP. <laughs> Bye, have great time. So there we go. You are going to get an extra 20% of your runes that you are farming. And I mean, if you've got something as powerful as this sword, you can take out them big guys incredibly fast. You can just farm them. It's going to take a little, like maybe a little bit longer than the ball rune farm or something like that. 
But this is just using something in the game that is supposed to be there, like the enemies walk in the caravan. You've just got yourself so powerful, you can take them out really quick. So if there is going to be any rune farm patches and stuff, this isn't classed as one of them, and all I've got to do, we'll do one more run just to wrap the video up. So as soon as I make it here, with the golden scarab, I'm going to run up to the surface. I keep going the wrong way, but I'm going to run out here. What I'm going to do is stand here, I lock onto this first one, and you can take a beam. Then if I look at your friend, you can take a beam as well. And then, if I just don't lock on and give it one of them, they both die. 2400 runes. And then if I'm fast enough, fast travel back there, boom. 2400 runes in little time. But that is fucking amazing. The gold scarab, the weapon, 20% extra. And this is a talisman, so you can keep it equipped, which is something you can't do with the gold fouled foot or foul foot. And I believe that's 30%. So I would only recommend using that foul foot if you're doing something like the dragon. Whereas your standard typical rune farming, grab yourself the gold scarab, it's 20% extra. And it's going to help you do things a lot quicker. Your levels are going to increase a lot faster. Because when you've farmed 100,000 runes, instead of just having 100,000, you could get 120,000. So it's a really big percentage. I mean, the only way they could stop this happening is if they nerfed the percentage. But I don't think they're going to. I really, really hope they don't. Please don't leave the gold scarab alone. But that was a look at how to make your rune farming a lot faster in Elden Ring. And that is going to wrap up the video. Let me know your thoughts and stuff in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah.